The Colorado River is in crisis. The U.S. government is proposing historic cuts in water access to avert catastrophe for the river that provides drinking water, electricity, and food for tens of millions of people. At least 70% of the water from the Colorado River is used for agriculture, and it supplies farms that feed millions of people across North America, including Canada. With a classic imbalance of supply and demand, the river is running a deficit. It has been happening since around 2000 and has been exacerbated by a long-ago math miscalculation, a population boom, and a hotter, drier climate. A century ago, policymakers overestimated the Colorado River's flow, and since 1906, it has averaged 10% lower than expected. It has been exacerbated by the population boom in recent decades that saw cities like Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, and Las Vegas sprout into metropolises. So this river system that was built to irrigate farms wound up supplying some 40 million people. The dams on the river system are the pumping heart of the southwestern U.S. water system, feeding irrigation canals, homes, and power lines. With these dams paralyzed, the system collapses, and the most famous one is the Hoover Dam, near Las Vegas. Behind that dam, a reservoir, Lake Mead, has seen its water level plunge. If the downward spiral of the last three years persists, the dam would, in just a few years, stop generating electricity, known as an active pool, imperiling a power supply equivalent to what's used by over one million homes. Then a few more years after that, should the trend continue, the Lake Mead Reservoir could fall to 270 meters, where the flow of water halts, and the result is called dead pool. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation was founded in 1902 to build and manage water systems in the fast-developing western states. It's now sounding the alarm over what it calls the most severe challenge in its history. It has announced that cutbacks are urgently required to avert an unprecedented crisis. The federal government is expected to take the unprecedented step of releasing its proposal within weeks, and that draft proposal would be finalized this summer and take effect later this year. States have tried for months to negotiate a voluntary agreement amongst themselves, but so far, they've failed. Since last year, they've missed two deadlines. The hard part is deciding who gets what, and it's pitting state versus state, upstream states versus downstream ones, and the heaviest using state, California, against everyone else. California has a powerful legal argument. It has established rights, predating the growth of neighboring states. The neighboring states counter with a moral argument. You can't just cut off water to millions of their homes so California can carry on with business as usual. When it comes to California, Arizona farmer Terry Button says they need to step it up. And the cities, too. One thing is almost certain. Any federal plan will provoke lawsuits with potentially lengthy legal fights. The biggest losers in two recent rounds of cuts were Central Arizona farmers, which is exactly as planned. In the event of shortages, this state could lose 320,000 of its 640,000 irrigated acres. In conclusion, the Colorado River is a crucial source of water, electricity, and food for millions of people. It is running a deficit due to a long-ago math miscalculation, a population boom, and a hotter, drier climate. The federal government is expected to take the unprecedented step of releasing its proposal within weeks, and that draft proposal would be finalized this summer and take effect later this year. The biggest losers in two recent rounds of cuts were 